The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and at amazon.com. Julie, welcome to the show. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Oh, good. Your situation has to do with your son? Correct. Yeah, tell me what's going on. Oh, I just had a question. I mean, I'm, everyone tells me don't worry about it, but he's three and a half, and he doesn't. he's the only child, and he always wants to play. A lot of times he likes to play with girl stuff. Okay. And my husband is starting to get, start wondering what's going on. And, I mean, is it time to stop, you know, telling him he can't do that? or? Can you give me, a, if, if the, I guess one of the things that crosses my mind is how is he finding girl stuff if he's an only child? And my guess is that there are more male or, or boy-oriented toys in the house. Well, basically, uh, his little best friend is a girl, so when he's there, he likes to you know, he, I don't know if it's just curiosity, but he, what he does is when he wears a T-shirt, yeah, he wants to take the arms out and pull it down on his waist and turn it into a dress. So that's the thing that my husband is starting to get worried about. And I spoke to my doctor, and he said, don't worry about it, but I'm just wondering whether it's time to stop. You know, I was just letting it go. Uh, what does your husband say to your son? Anything at all? Well, he'll sometimes he'll say you know, it's not, you shouldn't be turning that into a dress, you're a boy, but he's not, like, being harsh about it, he's kind of ignoring it, too. It's like we ignore it, and then we freak out about it, we ignore it. (laughs) Okay, Okay. Um, I know when my son was that age, I went out and bought him a doll, so he would have a doll, because that was the thing at that time, that you wanted to have, you didn't want to... Uh, just put guns in your son's hands like they did when we were growing up in my generation, in, in your, not, you know, toy guns, the water guns or the rest. It, and my son played with the doll. He enjoyed the doll. And decades later, I pulled it out of the barn and it was a little moldy. And I said, oh, here's the doll you loved. And he looked at it like, what, Ma? <laughs> I had no recollection of it. Yeah. So if you make a big deal of it, it's more likely to get entrenched and become a power struggle and something that your son might use to fight, uh, use as a source of independence. Dad can't tell me what to do. He says I shouldn't be looking at girls' things. Once he gets that notion, then he might fight it. And then you've got much more of a problem on your hands. Whereas if you just put on, you know, if he's lifting it up like a skirt and then maybe the little girl will try on pants or something and it's no big deal, it's just like dress up. Is he okay, there? I'm sorry. Oh, is he but there? But the thing, he, it's, he, he does it when he's bored. Oh, well, then the, give him a nice menu of activities. What are some... Correct, of- but I I, that's, I work from home, and sometimes when I'm, ha- I'm on the phone and he has to entertain himself for five, ten minutes, that's when he... It's like whatever remind... Something will remind him of it, and then he'll start doing it. It's almost like he's doing it to make me angry. I don't know. I yes, just- if the kids pick up that something irritates you, they will do it more. Because, because they're, when he's they're with curious. Boys, he's all boy. Oh well, that's good news. And your son, okay. your husband, doesn't see that. If he's with boys, he's, he's all boys. And if he wants to get under your skin and knows that this gets under your skin, then he's doing. Then then you're seeing a pattern. It has nothing to do with the dresses. For another mother, a, a mother might be very upset if she sees the son go over and pull the dog's tail. And the, do- the the son, the young son, the three-and-a-half-year-old, wants mom's attention because she's not giving it to him at the time. So what might he do? Hey, I got to interrupt this because we've got to pay some bills. 30 seconds, that's it. A very quick ad, and then Alan will be back. Romance. Oh, I wish guys knew more about what we want from a relationship. <laughs> Boy, I wish I knew more about what I want. Where's that ad I saw? Ah, here it is, The Selfish Path to Romance, a serious romance guidebook. Download Chapter 1 for free at SelfishRomance.com and buy it at Amazon.com. Hmm, The Selfish Path to Romance. That is interesting. A mother might be very upset if she sees the son go over and pull the dog's tail. And the do- the the son, the young son, the three and a half year old, wants mom's attention because she's not giving it to him at the time. So what might he do? Go over Correct. and pull the dog's tail. So he this just is- was afraid of the fact that he keeps, 
doing it. He'll come into a habit of it. And you know how some people yeah, start can, talking a certain way. It can start building into a habit, especially if you make it taboo. If you make it a nothing thing and give him other things to build habits upon, you, if you give him other um, activities, uh, for example, with my kids when they were three and a half years old, we had tons of activities around the home. Um, uh, there was a book, How to Raise a Brighter Child. I'm trying to think of who wrote that. Joan Beck, I think. And it was a fab, it was just chock full of ideas. It wasn't that you have to raise an Einstein. For me, I used it just to take the ideas that I wanted from it, not as a guilt trip. And I had, our home was just, it wasn't that our home was cluttered. It was that our home, you know, some some houses, when you walk in, you can't step into a house that the toys are everywhere and it's overwhelming to the child. But if there are interesting activities, for example, I had a cupboard that had a sorting activity. So I took all my pots and pans out and my son, sons and, uh, my son and daughter could go in and they could have all the dried pasta to play with. They'd put out a mat on the floor and they would sift rice. They would play with uh, spaghetti. You know, I gave them that to play with as a learning activity. Is this making... Yeah, he's got a lot. We we do. We're, we're constantly on the go. It's just, it's like he wants to constantly go, go, go. And when he gets bored, that's when he starts doing it. A minute ago, he was Supergirl, but now he just came here. He wanted to be Superman. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. So just enjoy Superman and ignore Supergirl. You know, just okay. My treat it lightly. A very light touch. Yeah, I don't see it as anything like a gender identity problem or anything like that. I think it becomes a big problem. When I've seen adults come into my office who have had identity problems or they've had uh, problems, um, yeah, like cross-dressing. It's usually because the parents, their parents made such a stink about it and yelled at them and criticized them and made fun of them. What do you think, you're a girl? That it it became much more, it, it was more of a power struggle with the parents and a fight for their own independence. And then they ended up, as you said, making it into a habit you know, the cross-dressing or the, oh, the, the exposing themselves or different problems like that. They, so, I, you know, my my sense is that um, with your son, just treat it just gently and as a nothing issue and enjoy the fact that he does have a much wider menu. You're saying that he likes playing boys with boys and with boy toys and that he, uh, that this is only when he gets together with this girl. Right? Okay. Well, no. With his little girlfriend and at home, he'll turn his shirts into dresses. Yeah, I wouldn't make a big deal about it. And once in a while, he want to put a uh, he... shirt on his head to make it hair, but look like hair. Oh, you know what I might do? He could have a little costume corner if you wanted to, but make mostly male clothes. <laughs> Your That's pirates wanna... thing, like a, co- a Halloween things, you know, you could have that. So he's got a little dress up corner, but it isn't just girls clothes. It's, it's mostly all male clothes that are all different and it will give him a, you know, he could, you could picture him as an actor someday. Okay. Okay, that's that's one idea, but just give him a wider menu of things to select from, and don't make a big deal about this. And I think that that will, uh, and, and definitely don't picture him in the future as having gender identity problems, because then it, you, it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. You treat him that way. How would you recognize if that was an issue? I think it's not with your case. It, uh, is it, yeah. Are they born you know that what? Let way, me or? let me touch base with you during the break. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner on the Rational Brace, Basis of Happiness. No. For more Dr. Kenner podcast, go to drkenner.com and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path of Romance by psychologist Drs. Kenner and Locke. If you think your partner's being unfair, a way to avoid overreacting is to summarize what you heard your partner say and check to see if what you heard was accurate. Avoid adding comments of your own at this point. The goal is to let both of you digest what was said and clear up misunderstandings. For example, suppose Aaron complains to his wife Jane in general terms that they've been spending too much money. Jane might ask, are you upset with me for buying those new clothes? Is that what's bothering you? Aaron could then clarify what he meant. He might say, yes, that bothers me a lot. Or he might say, oh no, I love your new outfits. I'm upset that I spent so much on 
landscaping. Many arguments are based on what we think our partner meant, and often it's not accurate. You can download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com, and you can buy the book at amazon.com.